I find out as much find out as, mu as much as I possibly can. In order to meet the Bournemouth players at the hotel and to beat the crowds, we left ten minutes before the final whistle. The two South End players being watched had not impressed on this occasion. The two John Aldridge goals were both missed by us. One scored before we arrived, one once we had left. Even though she's gone away I first fled then. You won't hear me. 14 hours after his motivatingly happy good mornings, Tony Pulis was still as fresh and joyful. But he accepted, while it had been an all too typical day, it doesn't make for an easy lifestyle. The only way we've, you know, we, we're going to survive is by spending the hours that we do. You know, they, you come away from the football ground and the supporters who watch an hour and a half of football a week, or maybe three hours a week, two games a week. And they think that you're involved and that's it, finished. Well, you know, it, it's nice having you on board, Grant, to see what, you know, the time that we do spend. And this is not just us. This is just not me and Mike. This is most managers, most coaches up and down the country working their socks off, really, to try and find players and build a team that will be successful. The problem we've got is that, you know, we've got that massive debt that, that clouds us. Still. One hour on the phone, two hours of training, 15 minutes for lunch, six and a half hours in the car to Tranmere, an hour at Brenton Park, an hour back to the hotel, and still the man was singing. Just to add to the punishment for us, breakfast was to be taken at eight o'clock on Saturday morning. I usually get up, um, I try and beat Mr. Keep down for breakfast when we go away. He's one of our directors who is in his 80s, looks about 50, but he's always up first. Um, I usually try and beat him down to breakfast. Um, I have a breakfast, have a walk, and then just relax. Um, some of the lads will, have, will be up for breakfast. Some will stay in bed till about 11.30 and then get up and have a pre-match. And then um, we get off to the game together. Any training today? No, we never train on Saturday. I think it's just a case of letting the players do what they want to do, what they feel comfortable with. And what about today? How, how are you feeling now? Yeah, you, you start to, obviously, the closer to the game, you start to um, think more about what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. And I think it's important that you focus on on being positive and think more about what your team is going to do rather than about what they're going to do to you. Do you want to see me down here in the room for a... Uh... The match day arrangements as well as team selection all left to the manager. Sean O'Driscoll, still holding a playing contract, doubles up as the physiotherapist on away trips. By half past nine, he was in the team coach, taking the kits and his physio equipment to the Stockport grounds. Well, it, I mean, we, go, we don't go to the ground every time, it just depends where, how far uh, away from the, uh, the actual team we're playing. We're staying because um, the old money raises its ugly head because we're charged per mile so sometimes it's not viable we're only 10 minutes away so we decided to come down a bit early to put all the kit out to save the, the rush and the hassle later on in the afternoon Stop. Having reached Edgeley Park, we discovered that the away dressing room there was surprisingly small. From my point of view, there's no bench. So when you're doing strapments and things, there's no way for the seat, so it's just how it happens. We've got a portable one, so we bring it just in case. Sean O'Driscoll set up his physio bench in the room which boasted an old-fashioned team bath. There were no showers. He then laid out the Bournemouth away strip, which certainly helped to brighten up a drab and cold changing room. He was helped by the driver of the team coach and a lifelong Cherry supporter, Bernard Morton. Well, the coach we're travelling is cost roughly about 130000 We've got uh, video, and toilets and refrigerator, tea and coffee, which the lads help themselves to. And the video is quite popular when we travel away. Uh, normally she'd be a 47-seater coach, but at the moment she's converted with tables, four tables, which brings us down to a 39-seater. And what about your relationship with Tony? Tony, I think so. I hope, I hope so. Anyway, they go on with Tony quite well. I appreciate what he does. I hope he appreciates what I do. And um, I hope we're making his job a little bit easier um, because I find that Tony is... Uh, um, he works hard and... Uh, 
thing I appreciate. I stand up for him on the terrace. He, he would never believe that, but I do stand up for him on the terrace. Because everybody at the moment, we, we've had a couple of bad results, and everybody wants we've got the, a few that barrack that want Tony out, which is only natural because I think you get a fan who will go to football and uh, only wants to win. They don't. They don't realise if we don't survive as a club, they have nowhere to go to watch football. And I've stood in the, the, the South End from since the days of Johnny Crossland, which is many years ago. And um, we, we enjoy our football and the group I stand with. And I think there's a lot of fans behind Tony who doesn't realise it. But obviously the bad ones, like anything on the news, the bad ones always come in the news. We were back at the team hotel by half past ten. There were another three hours before the players would gather to leave for the ground. Coach Mike Trusson agreed that the boredom of a Saturday morning was one of the worst aspects of an away trip. Yeah, I think uh, to, to, to many people, to stay in a luxurious hotel on a Saturday morning and have breakfast and a pre-match meal and watch the television, people say, well, that's lovely. Um, but, you know, you, it's the tension. You're waiting for the game. The players are waiting for the game. They're not quite sure what to do. They're, they're, you're trying to kill time. It is a difficult period, yeah. Um, but hopefully the boys are relaxing now, got their feet up, and... Uh, starting to get prepared for the game. Some players had elected to have the full English breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning. Others had a lion and preferred instead the chicken or pasta pre-match meal at 11.30. Some went for walks, others stayed in their rooms. The week of Cantona, hoo-ha, and the fact that Manchester United have dropped four precious points rather well, than lost. Four times they've had Chris Burns the and roommate Kevin Russell were following the championship race just as closely as the rest of us. Chris, we're less than two hours away from the start. Um, how difficult is this sort of period? This is really... This is easy. I think this is more easy than you coming down and thinking about it on the coach night before, you know. Because you've got the football focus on, you can see some pretty horrendous um, mistakes and hopefully you won't make them like yourself, you know. It's two hours time, but yeah, I find this the most relaxing time, really. What about the morning? What have you been doing? Um, when, well, we've been downstairs, had a, had a big breakfast. <laughs> And then we just sat in front of the telly and, you know, really, that's about it. Um, you can't really do anything else, you know, you can't go running around with that because you've got to save all your energy. So it's really be glued in front of the telly. Is that it, Flex? By half past one, Kevin Russell and Chris Burns and the rest of the Bournemouth players were ready to leave the hotel for the short journey to the Stockport ground. Manager Pulis was there at the coach door to make sure he had a full complement on boards. What's this coach journey like just before the game going to the ground? Yeah, you always, you know, you get a little bit nervous. You get a little, up, little bit uptight. Um, to be honest, as long as you know, we've done as much as we can now to relax the players. You've been with us. You've seen what they've been like. You know, they're, they're a good bunch of lads who, who really get on with things and get on well together. And um, you know, it's, you can do as much as you possibly can. It's when three o'clock comes and they go over that white line. You know, you're in their hands. And I'm no different to any other manager. You try and prepare as best as possible and you just hope that they go on the pitch and make good decisions and you know they're a great bunch of lads and I feel for them if we lose I feel for them you know it's not a personal thing when it's me you know I feel for the players as well and I think um, if that stops and you've got to pack it in you've got to feel as though you're part of it and, and very you know very much so a part of it because at the end of the day if the results don't go well Grant um, you end up getting the sack. The players retain their contracts, but you get the sack. Last on board the coach, fullback Justin Skinner. Justin, your murder. Your oh, murder. At Wimbledon, see? The team on board, one and a half hours to kick off. It was now up to driver Bernard Morton to get the cherries safely to Edgeley Park. Bernie goes fast and backwards, but he just forward. Don't worry about that. No, it's this not hard, though, Tom, is it? No, that's true. It seems as though going forward, though, doesn't it, when you drive? The ground was reached within 15 minutes, and there was a handful of Bournemouth supporters ready to greet the players off the coach. Game on! Autographs were signed. How do you spell it? Best wishes were accepted. How are you doing? All right. Then it was through to the players' entrance. I want to go and collect the tickets. Oh, yeah. Just get it off. Past the away dressing room, which was to be Cherry's adopted home for the next four hours. And then out onto the Edgeley Park pitch for a first inspection of a heavily sanded playing surface. It was then that the manager informed the players individually who would be playing and who wouldn't 